Hey guys, the move H6 or H3 as white is very typical and sometimes it's pretty useful to avoid the pin or to escape from back rank mates. However, this move is weakening the castling, so sometimes your player can use it as a target in the attack to the castle king. In this video, we are going to study an instructive combination where white takes advantage of the move H6. Keep watching. This position is from again between two masters. The situation is more or less equal here. Maybe white is slightly better because they have the two bishops. Also, they are controlling a little more uh, of a space in the center. So we could say white is slightly better here, but it seems to be a more or less normal position. However, here black is playing h6, and now it is white to move. Pause the video now. Imagine this is your own game, and your opponent just played h6. My question is, what could you do here and why? The idea is that you can try it in the comments right now what you are thinking, what you are analyzing, the moves you are considering and the ideas you are keeping in mind to play the move uh, you are planning and maybe later I can come back to you with some idea, with some feedback, with some additional information about your thought process and well, even if you did a lot of things very well in the analysis, like you found a lot of good moves and a lot of good variations, I think it's going to be very well to analyze together, to debate about lines, about evaluation. In the end, that's what we all need to continue improving at chess, including me. This is just going to be perfect. So I think it's going to be a very good training exercise. So now I will say how the game continued. At this point, the player as white, as you can imagine, sacrificed the bishop on h6 and they're getting one pawn for free so uh, black is more or less forced to recapture and then queen takes h6 and then uh, let's uh, take a look at the position here white just lost one piece for a couple of pawns so in the end they're losing like one point if we analyze the the material with points and what is the compensation white is getting here well uh, the king is discovered the king is open and something important we need to keep in mind when we are sacrificing is uh, if we have possibilities to bring new pieces to the attack in this case white could be playing a g5 in the next which is going to be a really powerful piece on g5 because it's controlling two very weak squares like h7 and f7 also at some point maybe it is going to take a couple of moves but the rook could come over d3 to the king side and it could be also pretty dangerous for black so it seems like the uh, sacrifice on i6 was interesting it seems like there is a good compensation although we need to say that this is not that kind of sacrifice where uh, we give the piece and we have mating three or we are getting material back in three or four moves this is not that kind of sacrifice here we need to keep in mind like our things and play a little by intuition but it seems like the sacrifice is good and the compensation is more or less clear. Here, black is going to play queen f4, but first, uh, let's see what is actually white threatening right now. In my aim, black is playing something normal like knight takes c3. Then uh, there is this checkmate in four moves. You can pause the video and try to find it, I will say it. This time, starting with the queen is not really helpful because the king can go to f8 and it's going to be escaping. However, in these positions, there is this typical idea, starting with bishop h7. This is a typical mating sequence we want to remember. And after the king comes back, we can play bishop g6, controlling f7. And when the king comes here, check and mate on f7. So that's the threat right now. In this position, when black is going to play queen f4, that's how the game continued. Also, there is a short variation, starting with a knight f8. In general, when the opponent is attacking very strongly, if you can bring a knight close to your king, it could be a very big uh, help in the defense. The knights are good defenders and, and they could be controlling many squares around the king. But this time it's not really going to work too much. Uh, here white could continue queen g5. Also the knight was controlling h7, avoiding the tactics we said. And after queen g5, uh, king h8, then c4. And the idea is that put the knight out of this square. Uh, but also, we are clearing uh, c3 for the lift 
of the rook. For example, imagine black plays here knight b4, the knight e5, checkmate d1 over here is the threat. Black plays queen c7, okay? Then we just play queen f6, and then the bishop comes back to b1. This move is a little like slow, but in the end it's extremely strong because how can black stop in the next moves? Rook c3, rook somewhere on the king side. Well, in the game, as we said, black is playing queen f4, they want to trade queens, of course, but clearly uh, white is not going to, to trade. So bishop h7 is the move, and then knight g5. And now there are new threats. For example, uh, if black takes the pawn again, then we can interfere this line, so the queen does not protect f7, and then we have mate in 2 with check, and queen f7. However, after knight g5, in the game, black is playing knight f8, now protecting h7, so the move queen there does not exist. But, well, there are other threats. It was not only about the mate. For example, here white can also play uh, bishop g6. That's what happened in the game, and bishop takes pawn. This position is just winning for white, because after queen takes bishop, knight takes queen, king takes knight. White has a queen and three pawns for three minor pieces. This is clearly winning for white. Also, black king is discovered, and the rook is still uh, going over the third rank. Well, uh, the game continues with queen h5, king e7, and queen g5, king f7. Also, something very important will be the passed pawns on the king side. They are going to be decisive here. White plays here the typical rook d3, and black continues knight e7, I guess clearing the line to avoid rook f3, but also protecting a little the king with the knight. White continues c4, bishop e4, rook g3 with new threats over here, black plays knight f g6, and then one of the moves we were saying, h4, moving the pawns on the king side. Black plays bishop f5, h5, knight goes to f8, and then d5, opening new lines over here so the other rook can help in the attack against this discovered king. Black plays rook c5, then queen g7, king goes to e8, and d6. Threatening the knight, but also now with a passed pawn here on the d-file. Black plays here knight c6, and then this move, queen f6, just clearing the line for the rook, so in the next, white could be playing either rook g7, rook g8, with some new and strong threats. At this point, black just resigns. If you have any question about what we saw here, feel free to write it in the comments. I hope you have enjoyed this video, help my channel with some like if it was like that, subscribe so you get notifications for my next videos, never stop believing, see you in the next.